Hi everyone, my name is Hallie Hunt. I'm your Dean of Students. Thank you so much for joining us today for our second webinar in our Friday series where we answer the questions and address the issues that are most pressing to CSUF students. Um, we are, these are timely, right? So we're not planning these very far in advance. We are taking the most pressing issues that you're sending to us in our inbox and creating content to, that relates to that. And so right now we have heard you and you are sending in a lot of questions about how am I supposed to juggle being a Titan and being a parent at the same time? Specifically, how am I supposed to teach my own kids while I'm still learning uh, myself and while I'm trying to keep up with my own studies? Um, some of you are also working. It's a lot for people to juggle right now. And so I have pulled together a panel of Titans from across campus and I'm not pulling this panel together because any of us are parenting or homeschooling experts, far from it. We are all just doing the very best that we can. And I'm hoping that people will have some tips that will maybe help everyone um, figure out what's gonna work best for you and your family. So at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to Sarah Bauer, our Title IX coordinator, who has agreed to moderate the panel for us. Great, thank you, Hallie. Good afternoon, everyone. I wanna start out by um, thanking our panelists and asking each of them to introduce themselves and share a little bit about what they're um, comfortable sharing with their current uh, parenting situation. And then we'll get into the, the questions that were submitted ahead of time by Instagram and by email. So I'm gonna go alphabetical, so I don't forget anyone. Uh, so Lisa. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Elisa Flowers. I currently serve as the uh, Director of Student Life and Leadership on campus. I've been on campus for about four years. Um, I'm the parent to a set of twins that are nine and a half years old. They're in fourth grade. Um, I think something unique to my current parenting situation is my partner is considered an essential employee, so he still goes to work every single day, uh, five days a week um, for 10 hours a day. Um, so I've been on my own during the day uh, with the kids um, for the past four weeks trying to work from home, homeschool, and be the superintendent, principal, lunch lady, uh, uh, yard duty monitor <laughs> and everything simultaneously um, and uh, my pronouns are she her hers so thank you all for being here Blair you're on mute Blair sorry about that you know we're still learning it's only three weeks and we're still learning um, my name is Blair Miles. I'm the Discrimination, and Harassment, and Retaliation Administrator on campus. Um, go use preferred pronouns of he, him, his. Um, been on campus now for almost three years, three years come July. I am at home with my wife and my two little girls, uh, six and four years old. Um, so we're, we're trying to make it work as best we can. My wife um, also works at Long Beach State. So we're both working um, from home, and it's been a challenge with two kids who are active and ready to do something every minute um but we're, we're getting through it so i'll share what's been working for us and i hope you guys can share some things and i'll be taking some notes down too thank you sherry hi my name is sherry matthews she her hers and i am the analyst in title nine and i have two boys two adult boys i have a um seven months, 17 year old son who goes to Braille high school. And then I have a son that is um, a sophomore at Carnegie Mellon. And I am a single mom. So I'm here working from home, working with them. They are pretty self-sufficient in getting their work done and, and taking care of their own, their own meals and activities and their own schedules. I think our biggest challenge in our house is um, working with my older son who does go to Carnegie Mellon and is in a very competitive program. So while um, he is working remotely, he still is, he's in the musical theater, the, their musical theater program. He still is um, having to do a lot of work and having almost a full day. His school is on the East Coast as well. So he has some classes that start at 6 a.m. So he has to get up for that. So that's been 
kind of our biggest challenge is dealing, getting his, making sure he's getting everything done and um, managing his stress because he still does have quite a bit of work and um, responsibility. All right, Hallie, anything else you want to share? I know you did a quick intro. I'm Hallie, I'm your Dean of Students. Um, I'm also a mother to a newly minted seven-year-old little boy who's very active. It's just he and, or he and me in my um, household. And so, um, as others have said, you know, I'm, I'm your Dean of Students, I'm his mom and also his teacher and also the house cleaner and also the everything in my house. So it gets a little bit, um, it gets a lot crazy around here sometimes <laughs> these days. Kevin, you're up. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Kevin Thomas. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm the Associate Director for Counseling and Psychological Services here on campus. Um, my partner also works at Cal State Fullerton, and we have two daughters, three and almost five years old. And we also have my mother-in-law lives with us as well. And so she is 68 years old. And so that is also an issue when we talk with our our little girls about like why we're washing our hands and why we're being healthy because she is more at risk um, for what's going on around us. Thanks, Kevin. Magdalena. Hello, everyone. Magdalena Diaz, she, her, hers. I am the Title IX case manager. I have a nine-year-old boy that's very active and social. Um, I also, um, I, I live with my partner who is also starting his master's program pretty soon. Um, I work full time and I'm also in a full time master's program. Um, I also have a, um, I'm an empowerment self defense trainer, so I've also been working on moving that curriculum online. So that's another thing that I have to work on. Um, and I also have an internship for my master's program. All right, last but certainly not least, Maria. Hi everybody, I'm Maria Linares. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm in my first year of grad school, I'm completing my second semester this semester. Uh, the program is public administration with an emphasis in public policy. I'm also in ASI, I'm the vice chair for the board of directors. And I'm one of the board of directors for the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. I'm also a student activist with Students for Quality Education, and then I belong to many other orgs on campus. Um, I have three daughters, ages 14, 9, and 6. Um, and I think that's it. All right, so I'm going to get started with uh, the questions that were submitted. I kind of consolidated them into some themes that I saw. Um, and so I'll start with um, a question that a couple people asked, and that is, what is working when a uh, one of your kids tries to create a distraction while you're on a class uh, you know a zoom class or a meeting um, if you're also working um, so i'll throw that out there for whoever wants to start from our panelists blair yeah so um with two kids who are used to being in school and running around and having a big playground, uh, they actually have been pretty good when the door is closed because door closed means mommy and daddy are working. But there's been times where they've snuck their head in to see what's going on. One of the things we kind of developed actually with the help of our kindergartner is a color behavior chart. And I'll show you all in one second. But she wanted to bring it home. They do it in kindergarten, uh, blue, green, yellow, red. And whenever they kind of forget that mommy dad is at work right now, we remind them, okay, you're gonna have to click down. So this is kind of what it looks like. Hope not making you dizzy. <laughs> you guys can see that. But right now, one of them is in the green and the other one is at a high yellow. So they always start at green because they're good girls. And then they just go from there. And you just remind them about this, that actually has been very effective. Um, I guess that, competitive juices between sisters are going, I don't know, but they really, they want to be at blue by the end of the day. So that's been really helpful. Just kind of remind them about right now, mommy has to do this work, daddy has to do this work, but we'll be there as soon as we can. Elisa, I think you wanted to jump in on that too, and then we'll go to Magdalena. Um, yeah, I think even though my girls are older, they're nine and 
the house we still like create distractions all the time and some of them are valid like i understand why they're coming to get me or ask here comes one right now go away um is this your last meeting no go um sorry you see how this works Wait. okay um so <laughs> they are very much um Cause, cause a lot of distractions, sometimes valid, sometimes it can wait. Um, and so one of the things I think that's important is like, it, it happens. Um, I, I, when I first kind of started this virtual life, I was very much like apologetic for things like that. Um, and I have stopped apologizing because <laughs> this is just the world that we live in. And I think, um, most of I've, most folks that I've been on Zoom calls with have been very gracious um, and people understand. Uh, uh, parents alike are very much like, no, it's okay, you know. Um, I understand that you, you know, you have kids at home, they have questions, they have things like that. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that's kind of helped me um, is just to kind of stop having to apologize for it. Um, and I don't expect anybody else to apologize for it either. So. Um, when I first started it, I felt very much like, okay, well, this has to be just like work or just like class or just like whatever. Um, and it can't be not just like work or just like class. Um, this is a virtual life that we're trying to manage and everything's kind of coming together at the same time. Um, in addition to extreme stressors that are external or outside of the home, right? So, um, I think it's important for me just to kind of like offer myself some grace and also offer them some grace. Um, they're, they're older and so they have longer attention spans, but they're still kids. They're still kids that are like inside 90% of the day, especially like during rainy days. Um, and so they are, you know, they miss their friends. They miss, they miss things like that. So um, kind of their distractions or disruptions, I kind of have to offer them some grace in this transition as well. So I just want to put that out there. Argelina? Yeah, I just kind of wanted to go off what Elisa said. Um, I think my son's also older. He's nine as well. Um, I have a conversation with him and, you know, usually like if he's trying to, I let him come in and usually that will like, you know, he says hi and then he leaves instead of trying to push him away, which is just going going to him wanting to like be present um I also I mean I acknowledge that he's missing the you know connection the social interaction so if it's a meeting with people that I think again he can create I usually will let him know hey I'm going in a meeting if you want to stop by you can say hi and then if it's something that's more um you know that that doesn't allow for that I let him know that as well so giving him that option of like stop, stopping by and saying hi to people and also letting him know this is this is not the time to do so has been very cool instead of just telling him like with children I think if you tell them this is prohibited they're gonna want to be part of it so that's kind of what's worked great me. I'm gonna um, switch to Kevin because he had his hand and so I'm gonna ask Kevin to transition us to our next question so answer the one about distractions but also from a, from a student looking for resources specifically how to um, uh, keep preschool aged children entertained or distracted or whatever word you want to use. So Kevin, I'll hand it over to you. Um, the one thing I've been trying to remind myself is I think that I know at least my kids have been more anxious because I've been more anxious going through this whole process. Um, and so every time they do come in, I try to make sure I give them a really long hug. Um, just because I know they want my attention and they want to feel that safety and that security. And so I, I try and do making sure I remind myself of that to give my kids the hugs um, when they do and do it. When they do interrupt or they do become a distraction. But sometimes they do sit in my lap or they come for long for meetings and that's just part of it. And that's part of being the parenting of this is not what it used to be and this is a different time in a different way um, as we're going through all of this. Um, go back to that question again, Sarah. Any uh, resources or tips for preschool age children and how to um, work with them? And after you answer that, I'm gonna hand it over to Maria. Um, we've been trying to do a lot of gym time or as much as we can. So Cosmic Kids Yoga, we've been doing different times during the day. There's a lot of different animal exercises on YouTube that we've been doing with the kids. Um, we try to do two walks a day, even in the rain. And so even when it was really rainy, they put some boots on and they even got knocked over by the, the water as we were going down. 
like swept down the road. Um, but it was fun to have them out and try and just get them physically worn out as part of it. But then there's also the part of us that when we have some important meetings, we bought a Disney Plus subscription and they are watching shows because nothing is like a Disney movie when you need to get a kid to sit still for a little bit of time. And so that's part of it. Like it's, there's not. Maria? Um, so my youngest is six, um, and three years ago, I discovered abcmouse.com, which for me has been a lifesaver because she still uses it, and she actually enjoys being on it a lot. Um, I pay $9.99 a month, which I know for some people it's a lot of money, but I feel like it's a really great investment. The first month is free. Um, they have a story time. They have uh, math games, art, music, social studies. And there's like a virtual character who's a teacher. And so she guides them through this whole um, lesson. And um, it's really interactive. So that's really fun for them. They have a lot of games on there too. And it's all educational. Um, and I know because of the pandemic right now, they have another promotion where I think the first two months are free. So I would definitely recommend it to parents. Great resources. Thank you. I want to uh, move to an another question that multiple people asked. And that is just, how are you managing? I mean, you have classes, uh, you, some of you are working, you have children, your children have to do schoolwork, um, they may have extracurricular stuff that they're also doing, and so how are you, how are you scheduling and how are you doing all of that day-to-day -day stuff and making sure that it, all, um, that it all gets done? Hallie, we'll start with you. I want to say first that I think it's really important that we acknowledge that it's not all going to get done. So it, there's just no way. There's no way that you can do all the things. You can't be a full-time teacher and a full-time student and a full-time parent and cook and clean and do all the things that you want to do. So I had to let go of that pretty quickly. Otherwise, if I had kind of, I had a moment where my son's teacher, who's been wonderful, sent though another online platform that we had to log on and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And, and at that moment, I just realized, you know what, if he doesn't log on to this today, it's not going to be the end of the world. We'll figure it out tomorrow. Um, but then on top of that, once I made that acknowledgement that we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do, I decided that um, we're reading Harry Potter. And so I decided that at least once a day, we were going to have fun, even if we had to schedule it, even if I had to force it to happen, because it can get so stressful and crazy. We we're going to have fun. And we call schooling right now, Hogwarts School of COVIDry. So we talk about COVID-19 and like, this is why we're all here. And, you know, we planted, uh, we planted stuff in the front yard last week and we called it um, herbology class. And then our dog was like disgusting and we can't get him groomed right now. So we gave him a bath and that was really exciting. And we called it care of magical creatures. And so just, you know, trying to do one thing um, for Hogwarts school every day has also been, um, helpful for him and even if we decide after the fact like oh how does that fit into into hogwarts um it's been fun and and also just an acknowledgement that this is not normal and so um let's try to make it a little bit magical if we can maria um so i have always been the type of person that i'm very organized and i have to have like a whole planner a whole schedule Every minute of the day is counted for it so that at the end of the night, I feel like I've accomplished my day and I check off what I, I I'm just that person. Um, and the first week was the roughest week, I think, because once my kids were um, put on distance learning and then so was I, our campus, um, I laid on the couch a lot for like three days straight. I was like, I don't feel like there's a sense of accomplishment. Um, they were struggling too, and so we did a lot of movie watching. Eventually, um, they got back on track with everything because that first week they were on um, spring break, so it worked out for them. I wasn't, but they were. Um, so I realized that the schedule that I had created for them was going to have to go out the window. I let them sleep in until um, 9.30 in the morning as opposed to they were used to waking up for my teenager at 6 a.m. and my two youngest at 7 a.m. So now they're happy kids get to wake up more late, um, even though they go to bed at the same time. Um, so I would definitely say that not having a schedule is okay. And if 
for some reason my youngest feels like she doesn't want to do the math on Wednesday, it's okay, we can try to do it on Saturday. So definitely taking that pressure off. Great tips. Anyone else want to jump in on this one? Blair? Yeah, um, so I think the question was, how do we accomplish it all, juggle it all? And as Hallie said, we don't, at least I don't. Um, but I try to make the best of the situation. So it's only 24 hours in a day, right? So I have, I mean, I've just realized that I'm not going to get any substantive work done from nine to seven. I'm just not, I'm going to respond to some emails, do these scheduled Zoom meetings, um, maybe do work for like 15 minutes at the most, you know, like the, the free time. My, my, my work is done in the evening. Um, the other night I was up to 2.30. And yeah, I was feeling it the next day, but it had to be done. You know, it's not, I'm not doing that every night, but most nights since we started, probably I go to bed about 1130. Um, and it just is, I mean, that's just, that's the way I can do it because um, I think Kevin was saying the, our, the children need, our kids need, need us. So I'm not going to just say, no, I'm at work. Um, I'm also somewhat fortunate that I do have a partner that we can kind of coordinate our schedules. Um, so when I do have those Zoom meetings, she's usually with the girls um, and vice versa. Um, there's been a couple of times where we had meetings at the same time where that screen, you know, um, they could do arts and crafts, play with their Legos, but generally their reward for that hour where we're both committed is. And Blair, you, you muted yourself. Well, Blair's on there. There you go, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> That's all I have. All right, I wanna, I know we're getting short on time and I'm glad Kevin just raised his hand cause I'm gonna um, send it over to Kevin to help us um, talk about how, how you might be individually managing your own stress or your own anxiety with all of these competing responsibilities, classes, work, kids. Uh, so Kevin, take it away. Um, managing my own anxiety has been difficult. I think the first week it was horrible being at home and trying to figure out how to juggle everything. I don't think I've met somebody who hasn't said that with parents kids have said like, oh, this is easier. This is wonderful or everything's so straightforward. And I think as day by day and hour by hour. And so I think the biggest step for me, at least for my own health has just been like, I'm just going to name that this is chaos. And we are just trying the best that we can to get through everything. Um, some of the things that we do for our own sanity is we, we, I schedule things out. And so my partner, I have a really tight schedule that we do electronically and they sync together so we can see each other, what we're doing all day long. Um, and we try to keep a similar schedule for the kids during the week, but then weekends, we're going to have whatever happens. There's no schedule on the weekends. We're going to decompress. And if we stay in pajamas all weekend long, the same pair and nobody gets a shower or bath, that's fine. Um, it's kind of just making each day work and each, each part of it happen. I'd say for us, and I kind of go off of CDC, your best practices is exercise has been the big part of this um, as far as own mental health. And so I think when people have a lot of anxiety, sometimes a lot of families might be feeling like that irritability of like, oh, this cabin fever, or we're all like kind of bickering or nitpicking at each other or getting each other's nerves. I think a lot of that just comes down to anxiety and uncertainty that we have about the world right now. And so a big part of us for taking the edge off the anxiety has been exercise. So we do 15 minutes of dance and the family does a whole dance party every night and we dance to whatever songs anybody wants or we'll go for walks. We've really been trying to go for many walks and get outside as much as we can. Um, but there's something we can do physically to kind of help get that anxiety edge off, but also acknowledging we can't, can't be perfect and we won't get rid of it at all. Magdalena? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, so similar, I think what's been really helpful for me to manage my anxiety is to make time for myself, which, I, you know, usually like before this all happened, I thought that working from home would make things easier. Like I think for a lot of it, it was like a dream thing. Like, oh, I wish I could work from home until reality happened. And it's like, this is much harder. So much to what Blair said, it's really hard to get work done in the day. Or if like, you know, before where like if I was at work and I took a lunch break and it was my me time, now my lunch break is like cooking or taking care of my son or my partner or my parents that I check in on. So I have been very intentional about setting time every week to talk to friends 
and we set virtual meetings and those that's my me time and I respect it just as much as if it was a work meeting and I treat it that way that way like it because I think it can get lost like that's not a priority and then we might cancel or not show up so I've been doing that every week to keep myself sane in these moments um but also doing the same for my son because like I mentioned earlier he's very social and he is an only child so if he's always around me like that creates more anxiety because I'm seeing him be really overwhelmed by not being able to interact with other children. So I also set like virtual play dates for him um, through Zoom with his friends or like we do like um, different apps where like he might be able to play games with his friends because that helps me to see him connect with others. It helps my anxiety as well. I want to note we're coming up on um, the end of the uh session but i want to um hand it over to sherry because i know she had a comment and then ezra i wanted to check in with you to see if any questions came in on the chat so um ezra if you could let me know on the chat that'd be great and then i'll hand it okay my thing was going to say that um reaching out and talking to your co-workers or your boss i know Magdalene and I work together and we kind of like after about a week of this we had a phone call and we just sat there and talked about what's working what's not working what are our challenges and we both you know were able to bounce that off of each other and kind of I think take the stress off of each other that we don't have to do it all everything isn't going to be perfect um, and we know it and that's okay same thing with our my my kids my older son he was having such a hard time with having to be up at six o'clock in the morning for classes and and having so much work and it wasn't everything or all the classes it was one in particular so i said well why don't you reach out to the faculty member let them know what's going on and see if they can give you some help so he was able to do that you know just talking to the faculty member helped relieve a lot of his stress of what his um perception of what his obligation and how you know he was supposed to be getting all of his work done so that really helped alleviate his stress as well so you know reach out to other people that are doing the same thing and we'll find out we're all kind of in the same boat and and kind of give ourselves all a little bit of a break thanks sherry uh there was one question that came in on the chat so i'm going to hand it over to ezra to do that question before we wrap up yeah, so this comes from a student who I'm sure a lot of other students can relate to. Um, they're giving um, specifics to themselves. So they're in a major that requires a lot of studying. Um, they took an exam and did um, not get a grade that reflects who they are as a student. So they're wondering what can be done for students like them who are single parents with no help with young children and not enough time. Um, it sounds like this is a trend that a lot of our students are facing um, because they feel like they're buried and falling behind and all they hear is people say, do your best. Hallie, you want to take, you want to start with that one? Yeah, you know, I, I think I don't want to, I don't want to be the person saying do your best, but I think that the reality is that we're all just trying to do our best. I would encourage you first to reach out to your faculty member and explain the situation because not all faculty members are in that situation and unless you've been a single parent trying to juggle other things you can explain it as much as you as, as to your best of your ability and people just don't understand i didn't understand until i was in the position myself i have to say so you can try to talk to your faculty members if that doesn't work um and you know have a sincere attempt there I would encourage you to send my office an email. Sometimes when we um, intercede on a student's behalf um, and explain a situation, sometimes we can get a different result. Um, so that would be the second step though that I recommend. And then the other piece of just maybe the bright light at the end of the tunnel is that Academic Senate had a meeting yesterday where they talked about um, allowing students, because everybody's in such a, you know, a strange situation right now, allowing students to um, choose to take classes for credit versus credit, no credit versus grades. That's not a great um, 
it's not a great solution for everybody because sometimes people need grades in order to get into grad school. Some grad programs don't care as much. It affects athletes in a different way. But for the majority of students, that might be a good solution. Um, and I just want to remind people that we're in a pandemic. This is not only Cal State Fullerton. So even if you choose to take a class for credit, no credit versus A through you know, D, then everybody else in the whole United States is probably going to be making the same sort of choice. Grad programs are going to know that. They're going to know, wow, well, spring 2020, it, you know, everything went wild that, that semester. And so you're not going to be the only one. The playing field will be more even. The other thing I academic senate discussed was relaxing how people can withdraw from classes. So I never, you know, advocate that as a first option for people, but sometimes we have situations where that really is the best solution and if that is the best solution for you and you need help thinking through it my staff and i can help you think through that if you email us as well so with that i think we'll go ahead and conclude because um, i know we're a few minutes over time um, but i want to say and hallie correct me if i'm wrong this recording will be on the dean of students website i know a couple of people came in late so if you want to catch the beginning um, that'll be up on the Dean of Students website as well as some resources as well. Um, so, Ali, you, you have more about that? Yes. So, we have partnered with the Women and Adult Reentry Center to pull together a list of resources that um, will hopefully help you when you're thinking about how do you keep your kids um, occupied throughout the day and other resources like that that, that will hopefully help. Um, all of that will be on the Dean of Students website. I want to thank uh, my colleagues so much for spending time this afternoon talking about this important topic. And for you Titans out there who are doing your best to parent and to keep up with your studies, we're here for you. If there's any way that you think that we, please don't hesitate to reach out. All you need to do is email us at deanofstudents at fullerton.edu and we will respond as quickly as possible. The other thing is if you have other questions that you'd like us to uh, respond to in a webinar series in the future, go ahead with those as well, because what we are doing is just taking um, the topics that are of most interest to students right now and trying to respond to them. So thank you so much. Keep doing your best, and we'll be here for you if you need us. Thanks, everybody.